words, but labels, and the labels for our generation. Now, our next speaker, Bloomy, is going to give us a different take on this word, snowflake, and how it harms discourse and halts progress. Please welcome Bloomy on stage. Chances are you've associated me with the label of just another oversensitive, easily offended, triggered Gen Z. Sounds familiar? Well, an oversensitive, easily offended, triggered Gen Z is synonymous with the term snowflake. The term snowflake is used as a political insult to call someone oversensitive, usually directed at millennials and Gen Zers with more liberal political views. So maybe you would call me a snowflake, because I am offended. But today, instead of telling you what I'm offended about, I'm going to tell you why. And why it is OK, great even, for me to be offended. Hi, my name is Blumi Ulaputhai, and this is the Snowflake Phenomenon. Our society is moving towards a culture of both hypersensitivity and hyper-apathy. And what this means is that the more one group cares about something, the more their opposition retaliates with complete ignorance. And nowhere can we see this clearer than with political correctness. To be politically correct is to use language that is the least offensive as possible, especially when referring to certain groups like certain races, ethnicities, genders, or sexual orientations. It's someone's same partner instead of husband or wife to avoid assuming anyone's sexuality or using the term non-disabled instead of able-bodied to be more inclusive to the community. It's all about changing the way you speak and the language that you choose to use to be more inclusive and mindful to how other people might feel. Political correctness strives to address the microaggressions embedded in our language today. A study done by Fortune magazine on 4,275 Americans in the workplace found that 60% said that they had witnessed or potentially witnessed microaggressions, or 7 in 10 said that they were uncomfortable witnessing it. So you might be thinking, why not just stand up to microaggressions? I mean, easy enough, right? Because in a perfect world, all you should really have to say is, hey, I feel offended by the comment you just made. It should be enough for the other person to respond with, sorry about that, I didn't mean to offend you. And then you can hold hands, go frolicking in the lavender fields, sing a kuna matata, and live happily ever after. <laughs> but this is not a perfect world. And instead, the response that you're much more likely to get is stop overreacting, or in other words, stop being a snowflake. Because everyone suddenly thinks everyone is too easily offended and can't take a joke. In fact, among white Americans, 67% believe that people are too easily offended by language. But what about among African Americans? The statistics are exactly flipped. 67% believing that people should be more aware of the language that they use so as to not offend others. And this very same trend can be seen with the different views of the different genders as well. So what does this suggest? This suggests that the people that do the majority of snowflake labeling are the very same people that have never truly experienced the issues that they so quickly dismiss. So when we have people like former US President Donald Trump calling political correctness the big problem that this country has, or when the author of American Psycho, Brett Easton Ellis, calls his critics little snowflake justice warriors, it's time to stop and think before conceding. Because this is Donald Trump, and this is Brett Easton Ellis, and Milo Yiannopoulos, and Claire Fox, 
and Megan County. Their common demographics also happen to be the groups that statistically face the least oppression. So what is actually happening here? Is it a call against oversensitivity or a call against empathy? Since we have a little bit of a winter theme with the term snowflakes today, let's talk Christmas songs. Let's talk, baby, it's cold outside. I mean, it's such a sweet song, right? Boy meets girl, boy and girl talk. Boy likes girl and the boy wants girl to stay over because baby, it's cold outside. I'll hold your hands, they're just like ice. Your eyes are like starlight now. We can listen to the fireplace roar, maybe just a half drink more. I ought to say, no, 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 sir. You're being very pushy, you know? And there's a lot more where that came from. Not very fairy tale like now, huh? In the past few years, a lot of people have noticed the not so consensual undertones of the song. And guess what happened when they did? They were called snowflakes. Now, I am not asking you to go home, make posters, and headline a protest against this song. But what I am asking is for you to recognize the problem with our empathy. The problem that people don't know where to draw the line. So instead of just defending the song, they go further and further, and before you know it, they're defending non-consent. That's a long way from empathy, isn't it? We are living in a snowflake labeling endemic, and it is obstructing our discourse. Now, if there's one thing that proponents and opponents of the snowflake label can agree with, it's that healthy discourse, healthy conversations, is beneficial for the advancement of society. The problem here, though, is not the offense, but it's the labeling. I like to call words like these discourse dams, which, when used in conversations, instantly blocks the flow of ideas. And there are many other words that fall under the umbrella dams. Oh, sorry, fall under the umbrella of discourse dams. You know, you open social media, you're instantly bombarded with tens and thousands of them. Words like feminazi, social justice warrior, or phrases like not everything is about race, or why do you have to bring gender into this? And although the term snowflakes originated in the United States, discourse dams exist globally in every political sphere. In China, instead of snowflakes, they have strawberries, a word used to call young Chinese people easily bruised, spoiled, and unable to withstand social pressures. These verbal and mental attacks are dismissing ideas before discourse can be instigated. And if we can't agree to disagree, then we become more polarized. And maybe it's time to start taking the tagline, words matter, seriously and start having these uncomfortable conversations. Name calling might have been a primary strategy on our elementary school playgrounds, but to say that it has become an incremental part of our discourse, to say that this is the political climate we live in today, is simply disappointing. I am a part of Generation Z. And as a part of Generation Z, I have watched conversations turn into insult matches and ideas turn into attacks. As a part of Generation Z, I ask you to sustain healthier discourse. Pause, identify, listen. The next time you have the urge to call someone oversensitive, pause and think about why they're finding offense in the first place. Identify your own privileges and perhaps your lack of experiences that might make it harder to empathize with them. And finally, listen. In a world where people think that talking louder means making better points, I ask you to simply listen. Because noise is not sound and oftentimes the loudest sounds, the greatest ideas are brewed in silence. The future of society will fall into our hands, 
And it is up to us to decide what kind of conversations we want to have and what kind of language we choose to use. And if fostering empathy, creating more inclusive discourse, standing up for others, and fighting for our truth is what being a snowflake is, then I urge you, be a snowflake. Thank you. Well, wow, thank you so much, Lumi, for that talk. You know, it has really made me re-examine the way I view that term. And can I just say to everyone in the audience right now that I love all the unique snowflakes in the room today. <laughs> hey, Nick, time for a comedy break. Mm -hmm. Okay, what type of birds are the worst at cricket? 